We've already challenged myth one, learning that what we now call Alzheimer's disease is not a singular condition, but that it is rather a blanket label that encompasses many processes closely related, if not identical, to severe brain aging. Now we will take on myth two, that people get Alzheimer's disease in old age. If you pay attention to the news, it seems as if more and more people fall victim to Alzheimer's each year. Newspapers, magazines, internet stories, and television reports would all have us believe that Alzheimer's is spreading throughout human populations, especially baby boomers, like an epidemic, and claiming millions more victims like a slow-moving plague. However, what you aren't told is that we don't even know how to diagnose Alzheimer's disease, let alone tabulate the numbers of disease victims around the world. Because there is no single biological profile for Alzheimer's, every clinical diagnosis is considered probable. And frankly speaking, not even post-mortem examination can differentiate a so-called Alzheimer's victim from those who have aged normally. Hence, the commonly made claim that a diagnosis of definite Alzheimer's can be given after death is itself questionable. No one ever gets a singular disease called Alzheimer's, and there is no evidence that an epidemic of the so-called disease is spreading throughout the baby boomer population other than the fact that the world is aging, and there are more middle-aged people at risk for the processes of brain aging. Today, clinicians who assess older persons with cognitive problems refer to the Alzheimer's label as a diagnosis of exclusion. This means that a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease can only be made if multiple other causes have been ruled out. The truth is, we can only make a probable diagnosis of Alzheimer's once we have eliminated all other causes of dementia. Although it is a scientifically questionable diagnosis of exclusion, Alzheimer's is most definitely a label that socially excludes by branding persons whose brains are aging with a stigmatizing disease. The AD label creates a certain story for persons and families who are coping with the challenges of brain aging, one that introduces anguish, fear, and slow resignation to decline into people's lives. For some, this story is helpful. It can provide a sense of clarity and even displace blame from the person who is aging onto their disease. For others, though, this story is destructive and unwanted. Dr. Whitehouse and I have written The Myth of Alzheimer's because we believe that people should be given knowledge about the scientific imprecision of the labels that we use. Such knowledge, we feel, can empower all of us to make an educated choice about whether the Alzheimer's disease label, and the host of cultural meanings it ushers in, is helpful in our particular circumstance. Demedicalizing dementia can enable us to engage those who are aging with greater empathy and understanding, rather than with fear and despair. There is simply no singular disease called Alzheimer's that our elderly ever get. As a society, and more importantly as individuals, we can tell a better story about brain aging. In the myth of Alzheimer's, you will learn how.